kickoff across the state. And it's really humbling that we're chosen as one of three destinations to, to rec be recognized on the A through F system. Um, I, I am very passionate about our great school district. And the things that I want you to know is who is Garland? Garland is the second largest school district in Dallas County. Garland is approaching 75% economically disadvantaged student rate. Garland ISD for the past three or I think maybe it's four years has the highest college career military readiness in Dallas County. It's not even close. All of our schools have gotten A's in that category and our district once again is outperforming everybody by considerable measures in our area. And to, to us, that is one of the great new parts of the accountability system that came under the leadership of Mike Morath. Um, it's not just about graduation rates. It's about getting kids ready for college, careers, and life be good citizens in our community. And matter of fact, we're so passionate about it, you know, we, we, we live and breathe it, and we really want to always excel, and we're always improving in it. And it's just comforting to know that we have over 200 programs for students, and we feel that's why we thrive. And under the pandemic, our college career military readiness rate went up. And so did our graduation rate, went from a 90 to a 94%. So that speaks to the testament and the vision of the Board of Trustees and everybody in our community. Now, we're here at BAC, and I wanted to give some of my time to the principal that led BAC, because BAC is, is a lighthouse campus. BAC is a campus that inspires others to do well, because they do it in every category of accountability, not just the overall measure that we get. And without further ado, I think you should hear what the essence is of BAC from Principal Amanda Ramos. Thank you, Dr. Lopez. It is such an honor to be here today on behalf of the back elementary students, staff, and the back families. Um, to, to think about our campus rating of an A and to think about earning all six distinctions. Um, it's truly a testament, in my opinion, that all students can learn. All students can grow academically. And while that's something that I've always believed, to see the amazing work of the students and staff, um, even despite the extreme challenges that COVID put on education over the last three years, is just strong confirmation that that statement is true. All students can learn. The district expects excellence, and as a leader, so do I, because we are here where our job is to show up each and every day and do what's best for students. And, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about how did we get here? Well, I truly wholeheartedly believe that we're here because we focused on building relationships with students. We focused on getting to know them as individuals. I'm not gonna get emotional here. <laughs> um, we focused on meeting them where they're at academically and then being intentional with growing each child. As a principal reflecting on this accomplishment, um, I'm so incredibly proud of, of the back families. Um, you know, the, the, the theme this year in, in GISD is to be the light. So, starting with the incredible teamwork that started with my amazing assistant principal, Chris Marshall, building genu genuine relationships with students and their families, extremely hard work, um, just passion, dedication, consistency, perseverance, drive, and determination. That's, that's what it got us here. That is truly, I believe, why BAC has been and will continue to be the light. So, I want to thank Dr. Lopez and his amazing team because we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the, um, you know, you guys pushed us, you supported us, you believed in us. And that teamwork and collaboration that started at a district level then continued at a campus level is uh, truly the reason we're here today. I also want to thank Commissioner Morath for this opportunity, for acknowledging and celebrating with us um, the accomplishments of the Back Elementary family. And finally, as we always say at Back, let's hop on that back road to success. So we are trying to be the light. 
And the lighthouse doesn't start just in the district. It starts in Austin. It starts with our commissioner. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing our commissioner um, for a number of years now since I've been superintendent. And, you know, we always judge people by um, what we see on TV. But I'm going to tell you what we don't see. We don't see somebody that's trying to reform our educational practices to be more suited for the 21st century. What we don't see is him having to navigate through 20, like 1,200 different school districts with 12 different hundred mindsets and trying to create one vision that every child can learn. What you don't see is a person that has been redefining education each and every time despite COVID, despite all the things that are happening. There's a lot of innovation that's happening in our state and it becomes from the brilliance of who's at top. When we think of CCMR, which is my favorite accountability score, I already told you that, that, that didn't exist until Commissioner Morath came. And there's a lot of greater things that are gonna be more impactful for our state in the years to come. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Garland Grad and our very own Commissioner of Education, Mr. Mike Morath. Thank you, Dr. Lopez, for that introduction. I am uh, super excited to be in my old, uh, my old stomping ground here in Garland. Um, uh, Giga Mouse, by the way. Yeah! That's right. That is right. I, um, uh, today we are talking about um, the excellence of uh, back elementary and what Garland has done to improve the lives of kids. Uh, but it is, I think, useful for us to start with a conversation about why we do this. Why we are here celebrating back is really a function of why we have school in the first place. So hopefully the technology will cooperate with me. Um, has it advanced? Does it? Uh... Yes. yes. Okay, I'm, uh, I got to make a little adjustment here in my, my tech. It, this, um, the reason that we are here today is because we in Texas believe morally, we believe deep down uh, in our bones that all children can learn and achieve at high levels. You heard Principal Back Elementary talk about this before. And when we say that all means all, we don't, we don't just mean if you happen to have uh, 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 parents that, uh, that, are, that are wealthy and they can give you the resources at home, we don't necessarily mean if you live in some big city. We mean regardless of where you live, regardless of what you look like, regardless of what your family circumstance, that every child has been gifted by God, and it is our responsibility to make sure that they are given the best uh, educational opportunities possible. And if we do this, then we will see excellence in the minds and the hearts and the, and the energy of all of our children, that all kids can learn and achieve at high levels. And this is not just an abstract belief system for us in the state of Texas. We, have, we make it this very specific. In third grade, for example, we say in Texas that every kid should be able to memorize their time tables. It's one of our student expectations. We have formally adopted expectations of what kids should know and be able to do at different grade levels. You can see here on the screen one specific third grade expectation in math is that kids should be able to represent, this is an algebraic reasoning skill, represent one and two step problems involving addition and subtraction, whole numbers up to a thousand. Very specific. When you, when you think about the teachers that you interact with, you are meeting professionals of the highest order that understand the disciplines of mathematics and understand the, the psychology of how that skill has to be absorbed by the human mind. This is, um, this is not for the faint at heart, this work. But it begins with this basic belief system that all children can learn and achieve at high levels. This is not, again, an abstract statement. We reflect on it. Have we done right by our children? Do they actually uh, know these skills? Have they mastered these skills in literacy and in numeracy? So we, at the end of the year, we, uh, we, we perform an assessment to see whether or not they have mastered this particular student expectation. The assessment is linked to the curriculum that children are taught in their classrooms. So, for example, in this case, an art teacher. We're at the, didn't know you guys were going to get a math quiz today. An art teacher had 736 crayons, right? That's a whole number underneath 1,000. She threw away, it's a, kind of a subtraction problem, 197 broken crayons. She bought 150 more. There's a little bit of addition. Which equation shows how to find the number of crayons the art teacher has now? We want to make sure that our kids have mastered these fundamental skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic, that, that, and that they can do it. And this is not necessarily about then for the individual child um, uh, should they know exactly where they are? Absolutely. 
But when we think about these expectations, this, this begins with us as adults. We, it is our responsibility to make sure that our children have learned and mastered these fundamental skills. And that's what we, that's what we do this for. This is the reason why we have an A through F system in, in the first place. It is a reflection on our work, our e efficacy of investment in our own kids. It is extremely, extremely important that we start this work with high expectations because the children will rise to the expectations that we set. And if we set expectations that are a mile high, they will reach a mile high. And if we set expectations that are out in the stars, then they will reach them. And this is why we do this work. We also believe that clear performance information matters. What is inspected is, re is respected. And this performance information helps us as adults concentrate, reflect on whether we did uh, excellent work, whether, whether our work needs to change. We don't live in a utopia. We don't live in a world where everything is perfect all the time. It is important for us to understand how we have met our moral commitment to our children and whether or not um, our ac actions as adults have to change and how we support them. We don't do this because of some ideology. We do it because the evidence tells us that this is extremely important for kids. There are a lot of opinions uh, 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 leveled on whether or not A through F is a good system, but we actually have strong evidence that the use of this kind of performance management system in the state of Texas helps our students learn more. They do better academically, they do better from a persistence standpoint <laughs> academically, and they make more money in their 20s because of the existence of the academic accountability system in Texas. This is a known thing. This is, not, this is not a set of alternate facts. This is exactly what the evidence tells us. We do this because it is good for children. It does not mean that it is easy for us as adults. It does not mean that it doesn't come without challenges. But this is the cross that we bear in education. We sign up for this work because we love our kids, but we, but we do this work because we need to help them grow to master literacy and numeracy. Expectations matter, and they matter all the time. They don't just matter when the sun is shining. It, it, these expectations that we have have got to be high at all times. Our kids only get one shot at first grade. And it, we need to bring our A game to help them perform. And this is true in a time of COVID. This is true coming out of COVID. So it is just as important now as it is in any given year for us to evaluate and assess our own performance. But of course, we need to recognize that the world is a little bit different. There are um, uh, realities that we have to adjust to. When you set goals, you want to make sure that these goals are meaningful that they, and they are difficult, but they are in fact reachable. So we made some adjustments to the accountability system this year as well. So when we rate schools this year, we will provide A, B, or C ratings, um, and anything else will be a not rated. And it's again to reflect that coming out of COVID, high expectations matter, but coming out of COVID, we also need to adjust how we are setting goals and how we are evalu evaluating our own performance. Now. Let's talk about where we are as a state um, coming out of uh, COVID. The accountability system is architected around three concepts. Student achievement, this is what our kids know and can be able to do. And this is important because we have to get kids to reach certain levels of proficiency in life because life is awfully darn Darwinian. When you go and apply for your first job, your employer might be interested in what kind of adversity you overcame as a child, but what they are definitely interested in is what can you do for me today? Um, and so it is important that we reach high levels of achievement with our kids. But we also have to recognize that we in the school uh, world are in the growth business. Our job is to take little bundles of energy that are three, four, five-year-old, um, bouncing around, and help them become self-aware members of the republic. This is the hardest work that anyone does in our civilization. And we need to make sure that we are concentrating on achieving growth for our kids. That if they walk in below grade level, they leave at grade level. Whatever we do, we need to make sure that they are growing. And we, we then celebrate schools with the highest of either growth or achievement because both of these things matter. We do this for all of our kids, and then we look at individual groupings of kids. You heard Dr. Lopez, 75% of the kids in uh, Garland ISD are economically disadvantaged at this point. We need to make sure that our public education system is a beacon of light for all children, that we are not just achieving high outcomes for some but that every group, every, uh, every child is well served in public education. So we look at whether or not we are closing gaps for kids as well. This design reflects our commitment to high achievement for all kids. It reflects our commitment to recognizing the impact of highly effective educators. And it, and it allows us to maintain a focus on the students most in need. And so what do we see from this result? 
the two graphs that you see, the two uh, 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 bar columns that you see, one is what ratings look like in 2019, and what is what they look like today in 2022. Even coming out of COVID, we have more A campuses than ever before in the state of Texas. Um, we are seeing performance improve because this focus on making sure that we meet our moral obligations for kids, uh, you see that focus translate into action by educators all over the state of Texas. Um, and this is, this is a celebration. This is a celebration of our teachers who are working their tails off all over the state, certainly at Mac Elementary. It's a celebration of our principals. It's a celebration of our principals who, again, are working, providing leadership and guidance to, to grow the adults while they're growing children. Um, it is a celebration of the work of, of policymakers that have established a, a policy framework in Texas that is extraordinarily focused on the needs of students first and foremost. And what we have proven in Texas over and over again is poverty does not equal destiny. That you can achieve high levels of literacy even if you are in a low-income family. There is no inherent relationship between wealth and numeracy, between wealth and literacy. That if we, as adults, if we focus on the practices that matter the most, rigorous curriculum, strong teaching, strong systems of instructional leadership, strong student supports, a, a relentless focus on performance, that we can see high levels of achievement um, regardless of family circumstance. Uh, there are many people that assert that uh, sometimes when we measure these things, that we are simply measuring poverty. Those people are wrong. Uh, the evidence proves otherwise. The evidence at back elementary proves otherwise. Now, growth is important. Don't get me wrong. We are going to look at growth, and we've seen a significant um, improvement in the rate of learning growth for students all over the state of Texas. The number of campuses that are achieving an A status because their kids are growing at faster rates than ever before, this is incredible to see that work um, around the state of Texas. And this is not an accident. We have a strong policy framework in the state of Texas. When you think about the leadership provided by senators like uh, Senator Hall, but when I see what Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, uh, Speaker Phelan are, are focused on from a policy making perspective, we have perhaps the most pro-child focused education policy of any state in the country. We do believe that accountability matters, that we as adults must focus on getting good results for our kids. That is why we have school, to make sure that they can learn to read, write, and do math. This is important. But we also want to invest in our teachers. We have uh, invested at scale in evidence-based literacy practices with reading academies um, at a level never seen before in the state of Texas, at a level never seen around the country. Because as it turns out, little children don't just naturally um, evolve the, the, the magical ability to read. It actually takes a very specific approach, very specifically trained adults, to make sure that our little ones are growing in their literacy, to, to, to both be able to decode the written word and to grow in their comprehension of vocabulary. So we are investing in our teachers like never before. We have also, in the state of Texas, we've granted a right of, to students and parents that if your student is struggling academically, you get a year's worth of free focused tutoring um, to, to ensure that even kids who are below grade level are brought up to grade level because we want public education to be that beacon of light for all children, that all children succeed in our school systems. And this is very unusual, and it's not, I would say, easy to implement, but it is bearing real fruit for kids. This is very pro-child focused um, state policy. And similarly, we want to make sure that what they are reading and what they are uh, working on in class is the most rigorous, the most evidence-based curriculum that they can then grow in their own knowledge of history and knowledge of literature and knowledge of math. We want to make sure that the, that curriculum is as rigorous as possible. And these major investments statewide have helped improve things statewide. But I am not just in any location in the state today. Uh, I'm in Garland ISD. So why am I talking about the impact of uh, accountability and celebrating the work of our educators for Texas at Beck Elementary today? Well, let's start with Garland. Um, before the pandemic hit, Garland had 11 A-rated schools. The pandemic hit. 
the largest disruption to education in a hundred years in the United States. Uh, I don't know how many, we've got multiple reporters in the room uh, who wrote probably a great number of stories uh, on uh, the pandemic. We have, I see educators in the room that were definitely impacted by this disruption. And yet, high expectations are necessary when the, when the sun is shining and when it rains. And yet, bringing our best to our kids is necessary um, in the best of times and in the most disruptive of times. And what they've accomplished in Garland is extraordinary, from 11A campuses to 16A campuses district-wide. This, um, let's congratulate Dr. And you can see over here to my left, I'll, uh, I'll do my best uh, Vanna White impression. We have, um, uh, we have, a, we have a, a rating system that allows uh, educators themselves, allows board members, it allows the public, it allows parents to know exactly how Garland is performing. But an individual parent doesn't choose just Garland ISD, they're choosing schools. In fact, Garland ISD is very unique among districts in the state of Texas because any parent that lives anywhere in Garland can choose any school they want in Garland. Um, when you talk about uh, being defined by your zip code in Garland, they live and breathe the opposite, that we will, we will provide excellence to all. It is remarkable. Um, but let's also talk about back elementary. So if you, uh, drum roll please, if you, uh, uh, <laughs> back elementary. Just a few short, uh, a few short years ago, uh, Back Elementary uh, was uh, just barely uh, uh, above C level status, and even coming out of the pandemic, the level of proficiency gain at Back Elementary is remarkable. Huge levels of student growth. Only a few campuses statewide. Um, have jumped from where y'all were to earning all six distinction designations. This is remarkable. And, and for those of you who don't know distinction designations, distinction designations, these are because you are distinct. This is, uh, 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 they're, they're well named designations. This is a pretty remarkable uh, performance improvements. And so I really just want to say um, to, to the principal, to the teachers of Back Elementary, it is amazing what you've accomplished, and uh, let me let me do let me do what everyone should do for educators. Um, after a year uh, that you have been able to deliver for our kids. Now, I will also say that we provide um, easy to access ratings for our um, schools all over the state of Texas. So you can visit texasschools.gov and uh, pull up information, rating information for uh, schools all over the state of Texas. I think, um, we'll just, this is going to be too complicated. Um, <laughs> um, so um, feel free, you can pull this up on your phone or on the, uh, uh, on the internet. Um, uh, go to texasschools.gov, you can type in uh, back elementary, there's, there's actually I think only one back elementary, so you'll, you'll find the one. You can also type in your home address, um, and you can browse by address and see how all the schools in and around Garland have done. Uh, it is truly incredible. Well, we believe in transparent performance information. These are taxpayer funded schools, the taxpayers deserve to know how well the schools are, are working. These are schools in Garland that parents can choose among any of the schools in the district. We want to make sure that parents find the best fit school for their kids. And then we as educators use this information to reflect on the year that we just achieved and how do we plan to make the next year better. And that's uh, really what this is about. It's about striving for continuous improvement and celebrating success, not running away from challenges, uh, and reflecting both how the successes were achieved, what needs to change where there are challenges. So again, thank you all for, um, thank you all for the incredible work that you did this last year. Um, I am, on behalf of five and a half million souls in Texas public schools, I am th thankful for your work and your leadership. Uh, God bless you for what you've done.